What's happening guys? Back here again and today I have a on my mind video and what this is going to be about today guys is perceived sharpness. Um, that's right. Uh, it's, it's really just about what, what we feel, what you personally feel is sharp. And this is different for everybody. Um, it, it varies from user to user. And this is what this video is all about is sharpness is really just about your needs, your likes, your wants. It's really just a very subjective thing, sharpness. Um, for instance, as you guys saw, I got a Rike or Rake, however you want to say it, uh, Griffin. And when that knife came, or I'm sorry, first it was the Rike uh, P801, which I know I got a bunch of slack for the sort of negative review I gave on that knife. But that knife came from the factory from Rake with a polished edge. That's right, guys. I mean, sorry, I'm going to move the camera here. It was a polished edge. By, by pretty much anybody's standards, it was polished. Uh, it was to a higher grit. It was somewhat of a mirror edge. Um, it, it wasn't mirror. Like, if you're a sharpener and you actually get mirrored edges, like where you can literally read off of the edge, I don't think it was necessarily that mirrored. But you could see reflection off the, off the uh, edge, and it was, it, for most intensive purposes, it was mirrored. Um, most people would consider that mirrored. And it was slicing paper. It could relatively shave hair as well. It, was, it wasn't horribly dull. But I could literally take that blade against my fingers and, and in the video of the P801, I actually showed that um, footage of me pushing up against my fingers. And that was the, sh I know I, I can't prove it. I didn't take it out of the box and rub it up against my fingers, but that was the factory edge after very minor amount of cutting, like maybe, you know, whatever, a total of like 20 feet of cardboard cutting, maybe. And then I stropped it. So it was even stropped and I could literally push that thing up against my fingers to where you saw white and rub sideways and it would not cut me, would not cut me. I put it on my arm and did that, which is even softer skin and it would not cut the skin. Didn't even like grab the skin. Um, yet it would shave hair and it would cut paper. So uh, the, the Sharpness is, is different in different ways. Aggression is another level of sharpness. Um, aggression versus uh, apex versus, I mean, there's a lot of elements that go into an edge that will make an edge, you know, very different in use. Uh, just like, for instance, a chef. <laughs> Steve, you're going you're gonna, to uh, probably be able to back me up here. A chef usually has two sharpening stones at his bench, like where he works, um, the rods, they, they carry rods, they have one that is a steel rod that creates serrations, it has um, these uh, vertical lines that run along the uh, rod that create these micro serrations on the edge. Now, a chef will have that and a ceramic rod next to him. If he has to slice something like sushi, you know, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, Steve, on, on the application. But when they're about to slice something like sushi or something like that, they kind of, they want a more serrated type of edge. Or I think it's vice versa. Like if you're, if you're cutting tomatoes, you want to have that s s micro serration on the edge just to help slice straight through without getting stuck. Now, if you're cutting something else like onions, you might want to go ahead and hit the ceramic rod and and create a sharper apex without serrations. So just in that small uh, capacity, you will see different levels of sharpness that are necessary for different jobs. Now in that same manner, I will say that, um, by the way guys, I'm here sharpening, that's why kind of what brought this up. And um, we're having a, we're in a bit of a discussion this morning on the chat group, which I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but uh, there's some carbide tear out videos going around right now, and um, and 
I know Steve's car by tear out video got res res um, reciprocated by a video by another very famous YouTuber. Well, not very famous, but more famous than Steve at this point. But, it, I mean, there's a lot of things that go wrong in that uh, with that comparison. But I'm not even going to get into that. What I'm really talking about here is application because we started talking about application. And when does it really matter? When does it matter to you, the end user, the one who, who this is all about? This is really all about just um, finding things for, for you guys. I mean, we do these videos essentially for the viewer. Um, I did these videos so that I could help people the way that other YouTubers helped me find the knives that I wanted or the products that I wanted to use. That's why I started doing these videos. Not for my benefit or anything I, like I'm not looking to make money I'm not making I'm spending money but um, there's no money being made here this is really just to help you guys because and and to make friends I mean I love you I love the guys I met here I mean we've I met a lot of really cool guys that have a lot to say that are very um, intuitive and uh, the groups we're in are great um, everyone's very understanding and giving and it's just a great community all, all around, guys. I love this community. So, um, you know, that's partially why I'm here too, just because of how awesome the community is and how friendly, well, not friendly, because some of you guys aren't so friendly, but truthful and honest. And sometimes I think that truth and honesty gets um, mucked up by guys just trying to either prove a point for their own selfish ambition or whatever it may be. Um, I don't know if it's always selfish ambition, but sometimes I feel like people are not getting the truth. They're just getting one guy's perspective or his thoughts. Um, I, I do it too, guys. I have perception of what um, scientifically works out for me. What, but I usually tell you guys when it's not something um, supported by scientific fact or actual, I shouldn't even say scientific fact, but actual, you know, like, if I can, um, I'm sorry, uh, I'm trying to think of how I want to say this. It's, it's not like something that I can prove in front of you guys on film, but it's a hypothetical thing. It's a theory. Um, most of the things we have in knives are, a lot of it's theory. Um, let's just be honest, you know. Uh, a lot of carbide tear out and all that stuff, it's all theory until you put it to use. And if in use, you're not finding any of it, then what the hell does any of it matter? You know what I mean? You guys can theorize all you want, but if you're not getting carbide tear out in your use, then all that shit is, it's just, it's mental masturbation, guys. It really is. And I think a lot of these guys need to just give up on the whole idea because if, okay, I'm gonna put it this way, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna get any deeper into this, but let me just put it this way. If you're saying that micron that um that carbide tear out happens at the three micron and and uh and sub level, like if you're saying it really doesn't, you don't notice it at a higher grit. Yet you're testing S ninety V, which is better at a lower grit. We're talking six hundred grit. Why would you need to? Why would you need even need to worry about carbide tear out? You don't need to go to three thousand grit. So why are we even talking about carbide tear out in a steel that if usually if a steel is higher than 4% vanadium, which is, you know, uh, 10 V class steels, if, if we're talking about that, most of those steels do better with a rough edge anyways, with a coarse edge, I'm sorry, not rough, with, with a coarse edge anyways. So why are we even talking about this carbide tear out at, at, at 10,000, you know, grit or whatever? It's mental masturbation, guys. This is, it's like, I don't understand. I don't understand. Anyways, I'm not going to go too far into it, guys. Now, on the other hand, we have um, perceived sharpness in the sense of like hair whittling, guys. I put a lot of, I put a lot of videos up. I mean, or I've been doing that lately because I know some guys like to see it. I'll put videos up of me hair whittling after I sharpen. Um, whether it be on Instagram or here on YouTube, when I'm doing a hype versus reality review, I'll, um, I'll put up that video. But the thing about it, guys, is what does that matter to an everyday user? 
Not much. Um, that hair whittling edge is gone very quickly, guys. I will say, you know, you cut two pieces of cardboard, unless you're continuing to strop it and keep it up, it's gone very quickly. And to be honest, do you need a hair whittling edge to do stuff? No, not at all. You don't need it. It's not necessary. Hair whittling is not necessary at all. Unless you're doing something that's crazy, like Steve talked about, like those, those uh, Japanese guys with the freaking plane that cuts you know, ribbons of, of wood. Like, yeah, if that's what you do, but usually in your everyday use, even if you're a chef or someone that does something like that, you don't need a hair whittling edge. So hair whittling is really just something that if you're personally like me, like I wanna get this edge as sharp as I possibly can right off the bat. Now, that's me, that's my personal opinion. My personal, it's not even my needs, it's just what I like to do. It's my personal preference. Now, does that mean that everyone should have their edge come to a hair whittling edge? No, does it mean that anyone should other than me? No, all it means is that I like to get my edges there. Now, um, one thing that we talked about in the group this morning is someone said, oh, I." I use belts, guys, is that, am I banished or whatever, you know, just kind of like expecting us to tear him a new one because he uses belts, like um, a workshop, sharp edge, I'm sorry, a work sharp, like Ken Onion work sharp or something. Dude, if it works for you, this is the thing, guys, if it works for you, it doesn't matter what any YouTube guy says or what anybody says. If pull through sharpeners work for you, do it. I mean, it, it, if it works for you and you're happy with the edge you get, now by all means, if you're not happy with the edge you get and you wanna get a better, a finer sharpness, then that's when you start branching out and looking for answers and looking for um, you know, things that make sense for you. But otherwise, it's, it's all ma mental masturbation, guys. We don't need, I mean, if you like watching the videos and you like seeing someone get something to an, a, a sharp edge like that, then that's different, you know? It's just, you're just watching it. But in your personal life, you don't need to make every edge like that. Now, um, convex edges. Some people like, really like the way that convex edges work and um, you know, that was one of the things is on the work sharp, you're pretty much getting a convex edge. It's a, you know, it's a, it's not a, um, it's a very, small radius convex edge because the belt's not bending that much. It's not like it's, you know, warping over 20 or like 10 inches or something. So yeah, I mean, it's just really just about your basic needs, what you're looking to get out of your knives. And that's really what it's all about. When I was younger, before I got so deep into knives and started, you know, got the pair of three and stuff and just opened a world of um, things that I didn't know about, um, before I did that, I'm going to be straight up with you guys. I used the pull through sharpener. I'm not super proud of that fact, but there was a time when I was a kid, it was easy. It was quick. It was easy. I didn't have to worry about trying to hand sharpen anything or, um, worry about, uh, angles or anything. I just had to keep my knife straight up and pull. Um, so to be honest, it, it, I'm not super proud of it, but it is what it is. And I'm not going to hide that fact or be, be uh, you know, embarrassed by it. I'm a little embarrassed, but, you know, um, it is what it is. It was at the time it worked for me. So I have no problem with anybody and the sharpening system they use. If it works for you, keep it up. It's, it's just one of those things that I think people, there's just so much emphasis on, on how sharp your edge is. And it's like, well, that's all relative, guys. It's all relative to what you need. And really, that's all this is about. And I don't wanna you know, ramble on for 30 minutes about different edges. It's really just about, what do you guys say? I mean, really, what is necessary? Um, honestly, sometimes really, really coarse edges seem sharper, you know? You do like a 300 grit. I did a 300 grit edge on my S90 uh, Manly, and that thing was so aggressive. I mean, I mean, it was still hair whittling. You guys saw, if you saw my uh, Instagram, that thing was still wicked sharp hair whittling. And 
it was way more aggressive because of that coarse edge. It wanted to bite and rip and tear. So that's another level of sharpness, guys. And it's still sharp, it's still just as sharp as my other hair whittling edges, but it's different and it's a different application of edge. Um, it, it's gonna tear through certain things. It's not gonna leave as clean of an edge and something that's, you know, like a mirrored edge, a mirrored edge will leave a cleaner cut. But it's all relative to application, guys, and that's what this is all about. Um, put it to use. What makes use for you? Honestly, guys, I do my hair whittling edge. I, I use it for, you know, let's say a few days. I strop it, I use it, I strop it until it's no longer working edge. I'm not one of these guys that like, it has to be shaving hair, has to be whittling to leave the house. That, to me, that's just kind of like absurd, but because I don't need that in my everyday life. Now, if you do, by all means, like go for it. I mean, you're gonna waste a lot of time sharpening. Well, spend a lot of time sharpening. I don't wanna say waste, because I do enjoy sharpening, guys. Um, and it's um, quantitative, like, I sharpen, my knife cuts. It, it's perfectly, you know, there's no wasting time. It, it, it goes straight into your uh, application. So I really enjoy sharpening my knives. I enjoy getting hair whittling. Um, but that doesn't mean I think you guys need to get hair whittling edges. That doesn't mean that I say you gotta do it my way or um, honestly, if I was sharpening your knife, and you sent it to me and you said, I don't want it to be that sharp, I would do it the way you want it because it's all about your use. And if what you're doing does not require an edge that's screaming sharp, honestly, if, my wife, if I gave my wife a knife, she would want me to dull the knife, at least to where it's not like, screaming sharp. I have a friend who said the same thing. Um, he picks up my knife and he goes to, you know, he's like, dude, I'm going to cut myself with your knife. I don't want my knives this sharp. That's understandable. I get it. It's just, it's every, you know, different strokes for different folks, guys, different things work for different people. Um, and that's really what this is about. So I look forward to hearing all your guys' uh, feedback and everything you have to say about it. I'm pretty much done. I'm just rambling at this point. So let me know what you think, guys. Um, and I look forward to hearing. <laughs> have a great day.